just appropriate to your age, but rather appropriate to what you're going through in life at the time. It's even more, uh, it's more attractive to you. So this felt like the thing to do. Well, it was Simon, Simon talks about in the film about kind of losing his feeling as an actor. Yeah. And kind of not having that yeah. feeling that he needed to have yes. when he gets out in front of the audience. Yes. Have you? Have well, you well, well, no, no, but I'll speak to it. If you, if you don't mind. Uh, the, the idea is that what you're saying is very interesting because with Simon, I don't think he's lost the, uh, really, the desire of burying it because the very tools that get him there are starting to fade. His memory, for one thing, which is, I've had experiences with that, but I even had experiences with that 20 years ago while I was on stage doing a... Um, a Shakespeare play, and I, 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 I had this monologue. In those days, I used to do eight shows a week. They still do, but I'm, I'm afraid of eight shows a week. I, I got to do <laughs> seven or six if I can, four if I'm lucky. <laughs> but, but I'm hoping that eventually I could get down to two or three a week. <laughs> but but mm -hmm. if you're doing eight and you're doing Shakespeare and you're doing the big roles, you know. Like, and, and, and this guy, uh, uh, this guy Simon, goes and plays these rigorous parts, you know, these roles that are very demanding and require you to be attentive and be there and not, uh, not um, sort of uh, fading uh, and your stamina is going. Well, I was on the stage once and I had done an afternoon performance and so I was now now, the, about an hour later, I was doing the performance again. That does happen on long weekends with, uh, with, in the theater when you're doing five shows over a weekend. I remember doing, I remember doing a speech and uh, thinking I was saying this soliloquy and I was thinking that I, I was saying all the words twice. So I was saying sentences, but I was repeating them. Because I had just said them. <laughs> you know, in, a, in the afternoon, I had a matinee, and I was saying this very speech. And I was tired, and it was the, the evening, but it was only an hour later or so, and I, I thought, I'm doing this again. Mm -hmm. Did I do this earlier? <laughs> I'm saying everything twice. Should I stop? <laughs> I don't know what to do if I stop. And I thought, the audience is looking at me. They seem to be hearing what I'm saying. Except, and they look kind of, uh, 
sympathetic to it. Maybe they think I'm losing my mind, and they don't want to, you know, upset me or yell for help or something. I think he's a little off. He's saying everything twice. But apparently, I wasn't. And uh, it was it was a relief in a way, and it started me on that slippery slope of doing seven and six, six performances a week, because I I just I just couldn't manage the game. You know, there's a great movie. I don't know if anybody here has seen it. I'm sure you have, called The Dresser. You know, yeah. with Albert yeah, Finney and Tom Hardy. Oh, yeah. Great, great movie and a great performance by both guys, and especially Albert Finney in the part of the actor. Who's I, I never saw anybody do it quite like that, where you really can feel the uh, exhaustion in his marrow. You know, it's it's in the actor's marrow. All the shows he did, you know. That. When, when I was starting out, we did 16 shows a week in the cafes in, in the village. And, uh, you know, after doing that for like 50 years, it started, started to think, <laughs> have an effect on you, especially with the booze and everything else that goes with it. <laughs> and the wild nights and the, what you don't know. And you just put, you remember Albert Finney's putting on makeup, and he's putting on all this makeup, and he's he's dressed up as Othello, and he says, it's Leah tonight, Albert. It's Leah tonight. <laughs> ah, he doesn't take it off. <laughs> so, you know, it, it gets, not only is it, it's, it's just, a, it's a strange kind of a drain because your life and your stage life becomes you, you know? and uh, you put a lot out there, uh, in, on the boards especially, because on the boards is like walking on a wire. A wire, if you're a peg, peg rope walker, and, and you walk on the wire, it's usually, and I've met a few, way up there, and if you fall, you, you know, it's, it's a drop, and, it's, uh, it, and that's what it feels like on a real live stage. That and that and so that that does something to you. Well, Simon has that fall on me. Oh yeah, well that's sort of a little more purposeful. Right? <laughs> there was no wire there in his head a little bit. And and with, but with uh, with the uh, movies, the wire is usually is painted on the floor. That's the that's the difference. So you can always stop and go back. And and it, not that movies aren't difficult because they're really painstakingly difficult. Because you, I think everything is difficult. Lately, I mean, <laughs> sitting here is difficult. <laughs> but 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 the, the 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 movie stuff and the wires, uh, and, and 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 that's accumulative with 14, 15 hours a day shooting. You get tired in another way. But in the theater, it's take off. You know, you hit that stage, and there's no turning back. You know, point of no return. You're going. The plane is taken off. If you're lucky. If you're not, you don't go out at all. Yeah. Some fears, some actors have even said to me, are you going to do that part? As though it were, you know, kind of a, you know, a no-no. I mean, it's, it's dangerous to do that kind of role. I said, look, it's dangerous to play the devil, too. You know, yeah. that, so. <laughs> but we get a kind of, like, actors get a sort of license to do those things because we're actors. That 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 cries you down. <laughs> <laughs> Please, <laughs> Michelle, I, should I say this? Yes. You should. Yeah. I mean, there's no turning back now. <laughs> you were doing it, and they had a um, a party for the Rome Rome Film Festival. Somehow I went. You know, that was a surprise to me too. I, I went. The party was in New York. I was there. And uh, I went in, and of course, Philip Roth was sitting there in a chair, quietly. And I was standing there looking at him, and he was looking at me. And I said, hi. He said, hi. I said, I'm Al Pacino. He said, I know who you are. <laughs> I wanted to say, no, not really, you know my work. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I mean, that would have been too clever, because I know he would have topped me with something, believe me. So I, I stayed away from that. But I had just uh, purchased the book, I had just, and he knew that. I had, I had gotten the rights to the book. This is four or five years ago. 
you know, when I had money. And, 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 I, and I got the book, and, and I, I, I was so excited by it. And I remember saying to him that I was so excited, you know, about this book and that we were going to make a movie of it. And he said, yeah. he didn't say much, he just sort of nodded like this. He said, yeah, these are the obvious things you're telling me. You know, what's not obvious now? You know, that. And I said, and I just found it so. And as I was going to say the word F U N N Y, mm -hmm. funny. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it, it, I found it so funny. That, that was not a wise thing to say. <laughs> why, why, why I couldn't wrap that? that word. Because he didn't find what I said amusing at all. And he looked at me and he said clearly, succinctly, it's not funny. <laughs> I thought, well, I, I don't mean funny. <laughs> you know, I don't mean funny in the sense of the word. I, I don't mean like laugh out loud. Or, I bet there's something underneath it. I don't know what I was saying. It was, I got into a new language. I got into a new language. I became very joicy. I was upset and nervous about it. So I, I just, my, 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 my girlfriend pulled me away and said, we got, we got to go someplace else now. And I said, thank you. Thank you. And I was saying thank you to everybody at the party. It's just really awful. And I guess he has seen the, the film. And I got no emails. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's understandable. I don't know if he liked it or not. Honestly, I don't. I do think it's understandable when you see your work and you're in your own, you know, sense of yourself. You, you, you really are, are a little bit confused when someone else takes your, your work and sort of ravages it, or interprets it, or puts it in a, another you know, form, really. I always feel that when certain people imitate me, I get that same feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> but but with, 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 with him, he's doing my book. I, he's doing doing my book, you know. And but he did see it. I was surprised he went. Actually, I don't know why I was surprised. Why should I be surprised? <laughs> but at the same time, I don't know, I didn't think he was the type of person. And I'm sure he understood that his, when his book, book, book is turning into a movie, you know, it's going to be a little different. I'm sure he understands that because he's a man of great sense of books. His narrative is, I mean, I'm just, I'm just laughing uncontrollably sometimes when I read his books because it's so private and so funny and so genius. And in this, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it, 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 it would probably, I saw humor, I have to say, when I read it, I saw but I was looking at it as an actor, as, as an actor who finds it funny that an actor would want to become like a real human being. <laughs> now there's something about that. I'm oh, sorry. It just makes me laugh. I mean, what, what is that? It's so weird. You know, you want to be a, a human being? Okay. You know, but 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 that he that he also wants to live like a what a civilian life, and and he does everything he chooses to do. It, it's so so totally wrong and so distorted. And, and strange because his choices are like, uh, you know, they're not normal. <laughs> Whatever his idea of normality is, it's, well, who's to say who's normal? And he sometimes somehow makes a uh, writes a scenario of what he wants to do, and it's a, it's a, it's it's sad too in a way because he's never really had a life like he says in the movie. From nine years old, he was off and doing things and, and, and acting in this and that. And he never understood. It's obvious to me that his back life was was uh, disturbing, and his childhood was was uh, was was really uh, a, a difficult one. 
filled with much, uh, much, uh, you know, pain and all that stuff. And I think his his reach into acting was part of, of what made him good too. Is that he was able to uh, find something that that, that served his uh, his uh, emotions, his his feelings, and uh, that, that he was able to get a resource there, like a water in a desert. And I think that meant a great deal to him. So it supplied him and made him move on. Like he says, I never knew why people had Thanksgiving dinners or stuff. He do not even remember his wives, which is sort of understandable. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when you go through that, that machine of, of life and success, because he did movies too, Simon, and, and not as much as his, his theater life. And, uh, oh, I do a lot of theater, by the way. <laughs> You never know it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I long for the theater because that's where I started. That's my sense of home. I never forget Alec Guinness in an in a interview. And they were doing a documentary on him. He was in the theater. And he got up and he, and, he, and, he, and he went on the stage and just started putting his feet down and feeling the planks and looking around like that. And he said, this is home. This is home. You know? I really related to that. That's where a guy like Simon feels most at home, and he abandons it. But the tragedy is that he abandons it because he's losing the tools that are keeping him there and keeping him alive. And yet he's operating on automatic pilot in the end that goes out and does that play you know, that he knows so well. And then he he dies. Mm -hmm. I, I want a book. She just started reading. <laughs> and I thought, wow. And they have, now there's an image. That's the one image I remember from the movie. You know, I did an entire movie. Well, we did it in increments, you know. We would come in, i do two or three sh days of shooting, leave, because we were busy doing other things. I'd come back to another five or six days. Then I'd be gone for two, three weeks. Barry would cut some stuff here. And we'd be back for 10 days. And we shot this movie in 20 days. Wow. Yeah. But the point is, uh, so I, 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 was, uh, I was out and about a lot. And uh, it, was, it was great being around her. She, and she was so quick. She, she never asked you one question about The Godfather? <laughs> no. Oh, my. Oh, gee. I was hoping she would. <laughs> I am hoping you do, too. <laughs> I did not ask the question. I merely alluded to it. Well, I can talk about it for days. Yeah, yeah we could listen. Yeah. But, but no, she was something, and, and, and I really, and she, you know, the truth is, when I saw in Toronto, we, we took this movie to Toronto, she was there, she was very talkative. Very pleasant. You know, it must be the way she works. I, I, I so, guess so. It, it was a set thing. Maybe it was. I mean, she was getting in a role, you know. I mean, that's. Uh, and, you know, we've all, heard, we've all heard about people who didn't have any of the set. Yeah, they yeah. don't. They don't have anything to say that would be by side of character. You don't have anything about that, do you? No. <laughs> well, you know why I stayed making movies? I'm going to make a real strange confession. When I was a young actor, I never quite understood what was going on. And, and today I know actors make a lot of movies every year. I'm, I'm one of them. But when I was younger, I didn't want to do it. I, I found it was waiting around a lot. And it was kind of, you know, it was training and boring and all that stuff. And I, 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 was, I did The Godfather, and it was like I was a lunatic after. Then I did other things, all these movies in the 70s, which I don't remember, by the way. Um, but I do remember uh, not, not doing it, and I thought, well, what? how am I going to do this eventually? How am I eventually going to do movies? Because I just don't want to. I made a movie every two years. I mean, it did wonders for my career, because people, you know, people, when you're not around, people say, what's up? <laughs> Something like that. But, but, but when I when I when I did do uh, 
And it, finally, I caught what it was. You know what it was? Anyone want to take a guess? Scarface <laughs> 2? <laughs> I can't really get around that. <laughs> but it was it was the camper. It's called camper life. Once you have a camper, you have a place to go. Which is a dressing room, really, but it's your camper. And that's why all actors make a big fuss over the camper. They're right. You put CNN on, you put movies that you want to see, old movies, you sit there, you make phone calls, you, you snack a little bit, and sometimes you actually nap, you bring friends over, you talk, you play cards, everything but act. Right. And, 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 and then when you, they call you, they give you a little time. And so it does, it does make for it. Uh, you, you get used to the camper life. It really becomes your own private little getaway. You don't have to be fired with anything because it's not your home. So you can drop things in it. Great work. Great work, yeah. Mr. Pacino. Sick. Loved it.